from Self Healing Inspiration, and I'm with the fabulous Casey Siegel, and she has got an Instagram handle, and that is raw.vegan.healing, and so you can check out her page. I'm so excited to interview Casey today, you guys, because this girl's got an amazing story. She has healed herself from rheumatoid arthritis, and it was really bad, so I'm excited to hear all about this. You know, I keep telling people about the amazing healing powers of the body. That's the name of my company, Self Healing Inspiration. Take your power back, learn how to take care of yourself, and you can have this ha happy, healthy life. And genetics, um, nutrition, from what I've read, trumps genetics. And so, and you are proof of that. So, that's what I'm really excited to hear about. So, Casey. Tell yeah. us your story, if you don't mind. <laughs> First, I just wanted to say thank you, Amy, for having me on here. I'm really excited to, you know, chat with you today and to tell everybody about a little bit about myself. Yes. Um, You're welcome. So it was back in 2013 that I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. I was 20 years old at the time. It was just just about eight years ago. It was in the beginning of March of that year. Wow. And um it was a, it was pretty crazy for me at the time because I was in school full time. I was working full time. You know, I was trying to, you know, You're in college. Yes. Yeah. I was going to USF at the time, um, for early childhood education. I was working in a, like a one-year-old, like preschool type setting. So oh, it was yeah. a lot of like getting up and down off the ground and running around with the kids and doing all these different things. And then all of a sudden one day I woke up and, all of my joints were swollen. They were like the size of balloons. It happened overnight. It totally hit me like a train. And so I went to the doctors, got diagnosed with RA. I ended up having to basically quit my job, stop going to school, like kind of changed my whole life because it hit me so hard and it was so aggressive wow. that I couldn't really go to school. I couldn't work full time in the setting that I was working in at the time. So, you know, it definitely was a pretty dramatic switch for me at the beginning, big change. They started right away putting me on all the different medications, you know, and they would tell you from the beginning, this is going to be a trial and error method. You know, there's 50 different medications we can try for this and one might work for you, one might not work for you. So we're just going to kind of keep there's throwing things at you. And roll the dice. You know, yes. there's something yeah. out there and I will hope it works. Yes, exactly. So they basically told me from the beginning, not only are, was I going to be on medication forever, but they also basically said they didn't, they couldn't really promise any sort of positive results from it. Wow. But, you know, for the first four years, I just did what most, you know, people do. And I was like, okay, the doctor tells me this is what I have to do. The doctor says this is, you know. The situation this is just what I have to live with this is what I have to start getting accustomed to and you know by 2017 I would had it for about four years already I would probably already tried 15 different you know treatment plans and I ended up in a wheelchair just it had just gotten progressively worse and worse and i would gotten to the point where I couldn't stand up at all I just couldn't bear weight at all on you know my legs so it got to the point where I both my husband and I were, went about a year without working because he needed to basically take full time care of me and I couldn't, you know, really function much on my own. So that is when we decided to kind of start looking at things from maybe a different angle and maybe think maybe the doctors don't have all the answers. Maybe I should try to figure something else out. And that was when we finally discovered the connection between food and, you know, my health. And so we went plant-based back in 2017, pretty much overnight. We, you know, we watched Forks Over Knives and What the Health and some of those, you know, popular documentaries. And then the next day we were just like, all right, no more meat, no mm -hmm. more dairy. Yeah, we're just going to cut it all out. Um, and we haven't, we haven't looked back since. And if anything, we've just gotten deeper and deeper into it. And now for the last, you know, nine months, we've been raw vegan and it's just, it's just been incredible. We've been, we've actually even been on a juice fast for the last 50 days. So we're just really, you know, trying to narrow down exactly what the best solution is to get me like a hundred percent, like back to where I need to be basically. 
And are you 100% or not quite there yet? Not quite there yet. You know, I'm still having some issues with a little bit of mobility and everything, but I have also been off all medications since September. So now I know it's my body is, you know, working for itself. It's, you know, healing. It's going through its processes. So it's only since you've gone raw? That I've been off medication? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, we went raw June first of last year. And then in September, I decided to stop taking my medication. So it was just a couple months into it. Okay. Yeah. And even when you were whole food plant-based, you still were taking the medication or? Yes. Yeah. I was still taking medication, but I had lowered it down when I was at the time that I was at my worst and I was in my wheelchair, I was still taking like five to seven different medications at the time. And I was still in a wheelchair, couldn't do anything. But after switching to the whole food plant-based diet, you know, within like six months, we had been able to lower it down to like two medications. And then towards the end for the last few years, I was just taking one medication. Um, and then when we went raw, it kind of felt like we were doing all of these different things to detoxify my body and to eliminate toxins. But then every week I was doing this self-injection, which was in my you know, head and in my opinion was just adding more toxins in that my body was then going to have to work to eliminate. So I was kind of taking two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. So that was when I decided to just stop taking the medication and just to trust my body and to know that if I'm giving my body the right environment to heal, then it will heal. But by adding in these extra toxins and doing these extra things, that wasn't what I needed to get to the state that I wanted to be in. Right, right. And if, I don't know if you've read anything on natural hygiene, but that's what it talks about. It talks about how the medication you're taking was really just covering up the symptoms that you were having, but it's not really healing because you have to go to the root cause of the problem. So all the medications that you are doing or, you know, are taking were actually um, causing, you know, the additional toxins. Like now your body has to go get rid of that medicine Yep. instead of like healing the body because the body's always doing the right thing it has like an inner intelligence that we, we can't outsmart you know and so really if we just supply the right conditions for the body to do its job then yeah. that is how we're going to find the most optimal health exactly you know and i think about it there's so many people out there who are on a daily basis constantly overworking their body and overloading with toxins from their food, from their environment, you know, from drinking and drugs and smoking and all these different things. Girl, tell me about it. <laughs> and their bodies are still surviving. Their body is like resilient. And it's like, okay, you're going to throw all of this crap at me, but I'm going to keep fighting back and I'm going to keep making you live. Right. So when we are putting our bodies in the best environment possible and we're eliminating all of those toxins and we're putting in all of these, you know, nutrients and all of this amazing stuff, you know, our body is going to like go into overdrive into healing mode and it is going to like do what it needs to do. Right. It, it's just amazing to me. <laughs> right. And then, so have you noticed any differences in your health from going whole food plant-based and then from going to raw and then juice feasting? Yeah. You know, when we were whole food plant-based, especially my husband, he, you know, he's always considered himself a generally healthy person and he is, but you know, he struggled with some weight issues. He had a lot of like gas and bloating and different digestion issues and stuff. And all of that, when we went raw, completely like disappeared. He had worked, he had always been working the whole time. I mean, we've been together for eight years now. And the whole time that I've known him, his like goal weight was always 175. And that's what he was always working at, like working out constantly and counting his calories and doing all these things to get down to 175. And then we went raw vegan and all of a sudden he was like 145 within like Whoa. two months. It oh just like, gosh. boom, he was like, I didn't even know this was possible. Wow. So it was, he's, you know, in the best shape of his life. He like still loves working out and still doing all those things, but just eliminating all those foods that we were eating that we thought were healthy. You know, we were having a lot of like, bean chilies and rices and fries and potatoes and like a lot of starch and a lot of, you know, heavier things because it's just what we're like, well, we're vegan, you know, there's no meat, there's no dairy. This is great. 
but we weren't eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. You know, it was a lot more of the grains and starches and different things like that. And it was really, you know, it was affecting him. It was affecting me in a lot of ways. I've noticed, I've noticed a huge decrease and, you know, we sleep better. We have more energy throughout the day. Our skin's clearer. Like my hair has gotten like thicker, you know, there's been a lot of benefits I know I'm still, you know, still on my healing process because it's, it's going to be a process, but I'm still healing from my RA, but I feel like pretty much everything else in my life has like really drastically improved just from the plant-based to raw vegan switch. Right, right. Okay. So for me, like I am on a, um, like a high raw whole food plant-based lifestyle, but I actually learned about a raw food lifestyle like 10 years ago. And it was just really hard for me to make the switch. There's so many people that are just amazing. Like you are, who are, were just, boom, I'm overnight vegan. You know, and for me, it was much more of a process. I found, you know, cause I was just living, you know, this like kind of like a going out all the time. You know what I mean? Like I was yeah. drinking, like I had like addictions to, you know what I mean? And I would smoke weed and like, so I had like a lot of things that I needed to get rid of, you know, in my life. And it took a long time. Like, and I feel like some of that comes down to like, almost like a spiritual healing of some kind, you know? Um, But as like, I've been eating cleaner, it's been, you know, whatever has been going on in here. Like I did like a chakra clearing, you know, so that has, you know, I found that I had like just during the chakra clearing, you know, an incredible amount of tears come out. <laughs> and then afterwards, I just didn't want to drink anymore. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I just had to feel some of this stuff that I never felt. And in our family, when we grew up, we were really poor communicators because if anything ever happened uh, and we tried to talk to one another, it would be an explosive fight. It can never just be a discussion. So we just learned how to just stuff it down, you know? And so then all of a sudden it's like, those feelings are still there. They're not going to let you off the hook, you know? So it's like, you have to kind of go through this process. And then, you know, as I was going through this, you know, kind of an emotional healing, I found it easier and easier to eat more raw foods. I actually found myself wanting to, you know? And then now that I've been eating, I've gone through periods where I'll go like, you know, raw for, 25 days or, you know, certain number of days. And that's the first thing I noticed was that the bloating has gone away. So that was one thing that I noticed when I'm eating more cooked is that my digestion is just so much better when I'm on raw. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's, it's crazy. Like, I feel like I was never really in tune with like what was going on with my body or how I was really feeling until we went raw. And all of a sudden I noticed how much better I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, maybe I did have, like, this issue and that issue, and I just didn't really, like, notice it. (laughs) Right, right, because I was, you know, who knows, I was eating so many bad things, you know, that who knows what the thing was that was making me feel bad, but looking back on it, I remember waking up in the morning, I used to work at a corporate job, and I'd be tired when I woke up, and I would be tired, like, at work, I'd be, like, constantly, like, nodding off, (laughs) you know, just waiting for the end of the day, and then I would go out afterwards, you know, go to like a happy hour or something like that, stay up later than I should, you know, and then do it all over again. You know, yeah. it's like, what the heck? The toxic cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, so I don't know. I'm just glad I'm not um, doing that to myself anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like you said, it sometimes it is, it can't always happen overnight. And I think the only reason that I was able to do it overnight was because my husband and I did it together. Right. And so, you know, it's the two of us. We, cleared out everything in the house that we didn't want anymore. We just started buying, you know, better things and just stocking up with, you know, fresh fruits, fresh veggies and doing it together. And they're, you know, so at the beginning, if I was having a, you know, moment of weakness of like, well, maybe we could just this one time, we could just have this one thing, you know, he would be there to be like, no, let's stick to it. We're doing good. And the same thing, vice versa. You know, sometimes he would be like, well, maybe this one time. And I'm like, no, 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 we got to stick to it. Oh, that's so amazing. You have such a good support system. Yeah. Even on this juice fast, we've been doing it together. And I definitely, there's no way I could have lasted this long. I probably would have maybe gone like two weeks, but, you know, doing it with him and we've just gotten into a routine. You know, when he gets home from work, we just start to juice and get things prepared. And it's been, you know, it's been incredible doing it with him for sure. 
Right, right. So that's like one of the biggest tips that I tell people is you, if you want to do more raw foods, hang out with people who are eating raw foods. Exactly. You know, and if you don't know any in your area, go find them online. Yeah. There. <laughs> you know, because we have been able to connect with so many people. Not only we've been able to find local people, like I know you live somewhat local to me. Right. And we've been able to, you know, find people who have the same viewpoints as us whether they're in our area or they're, you know, in another country, but there is somebody that we can talk to and we can communicate with and we can kind of, you know, bounce ideas off of and not receive the judgment that we usually typically receive from our people that, you know, love us so dearly, like our family and friends. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my gosh. That was actually like the hardest for me too, is dealing with the family and friends. Um, but I yeah. think that I've been just, I've been doing it long enough now that they've, started to accept it more and more but it was it was not easy in the beginning because imagine like 10 years ago you know yeah. there's only one yeah. restaurant in the whole city of Chicago where I lived that had raw um there was one that opened and closed really quick but there was really just one and I was actually amazed that you know I was lucky that to even have that because they used yeah. to do workshops and things like that and um eventually I ended up moving away um but that was a huge source of influence for me you know, yeah. just to go into and, and listen to some of the, this, these workshops that they had. And um, yeah, and then we ended up moving to Ecuador because my husband at the time, he got Lyme disease. So same kind of thing, except he was the one who was worse than I was. Like he was the one who got Lyme disease. And then, um, you know, it took some convincing. He wasn't really ready to change his diet and lifestyle until like he had proof. And um, I really think it took him to see other men doing it yes you know because a lot of guys are worried about losing muscle it's not going to be healthy for them and when he started to see all of these vegan athletes and he would meet them or you know I took him to the Woodstock Crew Festival and um like that you know he met some people there that actually changed his mind so it wasn't necessarily from me I was just able to introduce him to some people online like YouTube people to watch and then, you know, some people in real life to um, meet as well. Yeah, and sometimes that's how it needs to be because not everybody's gonna resonate with everybody, you know. That's why, that's another good thing that I like about doing it with Danny is that we both, you know, we both have our own Instagrams and he's able to connect with a lot more of the, you know, male population who is interested in this kind of lifestyle, who still wants to work out, who still wants to be in shape. He's able to like connect with those people and then I'm able to connect with the totally different group of people, which is more female based, but also people more on like a healing journey and who want to, you know, switch to this lifestyle for pretty, you know, intense health reasons. I'm able to help connect with them and kind of, you know, motivate them or just even have them motivate me, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know that you learn a lot from your clients. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's been amazing. Awesome. And then, so when you couldn't walk anymore, how long did it take for you to regain your strength to start walking again? Um, so I was in the wheelchair total for like six to seven months in 2017, but I would say the first like two months, maybe we were just still on a standard American diet, still just kind of following the typical thing. And then it was after like a couple of months of being in the wheelchair that we, I was basically like desperate. I'm like, I will literally try anything. Like, I don't care. I'll try anything. And so then when the doctor, we went to this like holistic doctor for the first time and she basically recommended we watch the forks over knives and that we go plant-based. She's like, you need to eliminate dairy. You need to eliminate meat. And at the time I was like, yeah, I'm desperate, but no, <laughs> like, I'm but then we went home and we did watch forks over knives. And I was like, okay, maybe there might be, there might be something here. Maybe we should try this. Right. Right. If it means the difference with you feeling better or not. Yeah you know yeah and so, probably like two three months into the plant-based diet I was able to start physical therapy luckily my husband works in the physical therapy field so he was home with me and he was able to like do my physical therapy for me basically and within like three to four months I was like using a walker but I was like up out of the wheelchair you know we were able to go and do things and it was like life-changing for sure wow that's just you know, I don't think you're ever going to go back to that, your old ways ever again, because you've seen oh. it, you have proof. 
Exactly. Yeah. There's no there. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to go back to eating the standard American diet. Right. I would never. I would never go back. Right. Right. That's how I feel. Well, like I haven't. I have no desire to eat meat or cheese. Sometimes my kids do once in a while because their daddy once in a while is he's more you know will have. I would say he's high vegan. Put it that way. Right. But he's not like perfect with it. But um, you know, and then. But for the most part, I don't think my kids have ever had meat unless like my mom snuck it to them. I mean, awesome. I've been around them so much that if she did, it was an extremely rare time. Yeah. Um, for the most part, they were raised, um, you know, high vegan or, you know, high whole food, plant-based, high raw, um, awesome. you know, like a lot of fruit and things like that. Cause I really fe feel like that is the best thing that you can be eating. Yes, for sure. So what is like an average day look like for you as far as what you're eating? And now before the juice feast, <laughs> okay, it yeah, would typically be like fruit all day. We'd have, um, you know, either whole fruit or fruit smoothies or smoothie bowls or juices during the day. Mm -hmm. And then we would usually at night have some sort of big veggie meal. We'd either have a huge salad or like a zoodle dish or a raw soup or some sort of big like veggie based meal right right yeah cool. that was our typical typical day of eating yeah it sounds awesome yes cool so and then like were there any influencers that were big influencers um, for you or was it just watching those movies like how did you discover raw the raw thing kind of came about I don't even remember exactly what first like sparked it. I know we were watching a lot of Fully Raw Christina and I was definitely very inspired by her whole story and her, you know, whole path and how long she had been raw vegan. And I was just really like impressed by Fully Raw Christina. Yeah. And um, Dr. Robert Morse was another big, a big one that we were watching a lot of his videos. We even went to, I went to his clinic because it is in Florida. So I went to his clinic. I got my iridology exam done there. Like, you know, started to that whole process. Um, so he was another, he was another really big one. Then He's John Rose. I did his first course actually. Oh, did you? Yeah. Like I, so I'm certified for detoxologist with his uh, program. Awesome. Yeah. He was definitely a huge, a huge inspiration at the beginning. And then John Rose has been big now that we're on our juice fast. John Rose has been our biggest inspiration for that. He's like the king of juice fasts. Okay. Okay. I haven't heard of him. So I'll have to look him up. Oh yeah, he's he's got like thousands of videos and he will tell you every detail of anything you need to know about juice fasting. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've just done some water fasting. I haven't done juice fasting. I've never done a water fast. I've done like one day of like like a 24 hour water fast, but I've never done like anything more than that. Right, right. And it's so controversial. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where I feel I would recommend only doing short fasts on your own or you know when I did it I had a, a mentor so I was able to write somebody who's really experienced with water fasting but um, you know they do have fasting centers if it's something that you wanted to do really bad otherwise I would just get a mentor or somebody you know to talk to what, your way through it but I, I ended up doing a five day and a 14 day. Nice how was the 14 day was that hard? Um, well, the hard part is not necessarily the not eating part. <laughs> the hard part is like all those detox symptoms. Oh, yes. You know, because when I, it was like the first five plus days, my nose, I could not leave the tissue box, like just oh, nonstop. And I couldn't breathe at all through my nose. And then it wasn't until like, you know, five or six that I could breathe out of one nostril. So like <laughs> breathing at night is like, <sighs> You know, like you wake up in the morning, your mouth is so dry. And then after that, my back hurt so bad. It was killing me to the point where I couldn't lay down at all. So wow. that's obviously your kidneys doing something. Yeah, for sure. Um, so who knows? I, you know, I, I was having probably a pretty acidic lifestyle in the past. So maybe I had a kidney stone or something that was getting passed, but it lasted like five plus days and it was awful, you know, and then after that, then um in the past I smoked at one time so I was just having like a lot of coughing phlegm mm. so it just felt like you know my lungs were somehow trying to heal themselves as much as they could yeah yeah it sounds like you had a lot of head stuff going on <laughs> <a lot> of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah yeah so that's just it like when people go on the lifestyle there sometimes you know some people might have more work to do than others 
sure. as far as like, you know, just what, um, you know, and the way I look at it, it's, is it's almost like um, I had to heal like a generational thing. Cause like when I was growing up, you know, it was just normal. Like my dad would just be drinking a six pack every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that was just something like, I can't wait to drink a beer with my dad, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, it's just easy for that stuff to snowball. And then just not really realize you're kind of taking on their wounds, yes. you know? And like he took on probably his father's wounds, you know, cause I know his father drank too. So it was just like this chain reaction that happened every generation. And then it's like this generation, it's like, boom, like I had to somehow, you know, stop the, the snowball effect, you know? So like I had extra work to do probably compared to others. <laughs> I blame everything on genetics, but I don't think it's the genetics that gets passed down. It's the habits. Right. It's right. It, that's what I'm saying is, is the habits, you know, yeah. because like, he, you know, that was just a habit he had probably he learned from his dad and then I, I learned it from him and then, yeah. you know, had to do some extra effort to just end that. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a house where both my parents would drink alcohol, but cigarettes was like, a, like, if you ever thought about smoking a cigarette, you were like disowned. So I've never in my life smoked a cigarette and I know I never will. And that's just what, how I was raised. But, you know, when I was at drinking age, I had no problem drinking. I was drinking, you know, plenty of alcohol because that was something that was accepted in the family. It was fine. It was okay. Right, right. When I actually smoking, my parents were like that too. They hated it, like hated it. But I remember I was just, I don't know. I was like a little rebel and, you know, I was kind of pissed off like younger and, you know, probably from stuffing all those emotions down, not having any healthy way of communicating or expressing myself, you know? So it was almost like my, um, I don't know, like just this rebellious, like you can't tell me what to do kind of thing, you know? Yep. You say no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So who knows? I'm so glad I'm over that though, because looking back on it, I'm like, why didn't I just do what they told me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's just what we got to do. Sometimes we got to learn that stuff the hard way. Exactly. And then we have to pass it down to our kids the right way. <laughs> Right, right. So that's like everything I'm doing. I'm just, you know, when I went to Ecuador, we learned about nonviolent communication. You know, we learned about natural hygiene and uh, we were, I learned all about unschooling. So I, I had been unschooling my kids yeah. and it's just been like such an awesome experience, you know, for to have them at home all day long is actually such a joy. Yeah. I know who they are. Like I know where they're at you know, we get to share our experiences every day. Like they get to see what I'm doing, what I struggle with. Like they understand me more. Like our relationship is just so much better. And like, they are interested in things. Like I have my little boy coming in here all the time. He's only six. How am I, how do I spell ender dragon? How do I spell this? How do I spell that? You know, and it's just because he's in Minecraft, you know, and some people might say, oh, don't do video games. But I think, you know, as long as he's happy and he's having a good time and he's learning, why not? You know, and a lot of times, especially nowadays, you kind of have to let them play the video games and whatever, because they're going to fall behind if they don't know how to use all of this technology that all of these other kids know how to use. Yeah. Like he knows how to use computers. He's been knowing how to do everything since he was five years old. So he's kind yeah. of wicked smart. Like he really I was playing for so long. And there was so many, like, I'd be like with a two or three year old who's like, grabbing the iPad and going on YouTube and typing in what they want. And I'm like, what is happening right now? Like when I was your age, there's no way I could have done that. <laughs> right. could barely play with my Barbies. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was a Barbie girl too. Yeah. To have like a house and everything set up all pretty and yeah. And I had two sisters, so we had lots of Barbies. <laughs> oh, fun, fun. So yeah, you're in Tampa or Clearwater? Clearwater. I was born and raised in Tampa, and then I moved to Clearwater about five years ago, um, a couple years into me and Danny dating. Okay. Is that where the university is? No, I was going to USF when I was going, and then I ended up switching my major and switching to SPC because um, I wanted to do school fully online. So I switched my major to marketing from early childhood education because I knew marketing would be more doable for me. And it was all online. So it was easier at, at SBC. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And then did it take a lot longer after you got healthy to finish school or was it? Well, it did. It took longer to finish school because 
when I transferred from USF to SPC, they basically said that my credits were like too advanced and they like wouldn't accept them. So I had to like retake like 90% of the classes I had already taken. So I'd already done two years at USF and I pretty much had all but like one or two of my prerequisites done. And then when I switched to SBC, they only accepted like maybe five of my like credits. And I had to basically like start back from scratch. So it did end up taking a lot longer once I switched, but I was work, I was able to do it, you know, on my own time. I was, I had gone back to work and I was nannying. So I was able to basically like bring my laptop and when like I put the kids down for naps or whatever, I would like go on and do some homework or so it just, it just worked out better for me. It did take longer. So I ended up being in school for like six years for my marketing degree, but I'm, I'm happy that I went through the whole process. Yeah. I mean, for so, somebody who's been as sick as you were too, it's just, a, you know, such a miracle that you've had such a complete turnaround. So yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. You're an inspiration to so many people out there. And it's just, I, like, I want to be able to post some pictures. Are you able to send me some photos we could show people? Yes, I did. I did send some photos over to you just like an hour or two before, before okay. this whole thing. So I did send some photos for you. Yeah, because you guys, this is amazing, like what this girl has been through and the complete turnaround. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover that we missed? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Um, and then you have a course too that you're doing to teach people healing. Yeah, I'm still working. I'm still working on. I'm still working on the course. I'm like in the back end stages of the course still. Um, yeah. But Same if anybody does need any help, feel free to reach out, and you know I'll do whatever I can to help you out until I do get my course up and running. Okay. Well, thank you so much, you guys. I will put uh, links down below to for her information. Uh, at least through her Instagram handle. And uh, thank you so much, Casey. If you guys like this channel, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. And hopefully we have some more stories to share with you guys about these amazing healing benefits of doing a high raw or a raw food lifestyle. So peace out, you guys. Sending you so much love. Bye-bye.